So our next train is CP976, which comes out of staging from Minnedosa and proceeds to Winnipeg. So this is the sheet for that. It is uh, supposed to depart staging at 0700, the six car maximum. It has switching in Georgetown uh, to drop the westbound cars in the siding, pick up eastbound car cars from the siding only, and then run around the train so that it can put the locomotive in the front. On arrival in Winnipeg, uh, it's supposed to put the locomotive on the head of CP975 to return to Minnedosa. So, let's see what we have. We have locomotive is uh, 769, the least GP9 with a caboose on the end. Uh, we have an empty boxcar returned to Winnipeg. We have an eastbound tank car. We have a westbound uh, boxcar, Vancouver. Another car for Vancouver. Eastbound green hopper. Eastbound boxcar. Eastbound boxcar. So we have a couple of westbounds, which we are supposed to drop in the siding. So let's uh, get this party started with uh, 976 coming out of staging. There's the train in the siding. You can see that it's basically just stretching it along the wall. Um, that was just my way of uh, putting a little more operational interest in it by adding a uh, little staging track. diamond in the foreground is the crossing of uh, the lead to the grain elevator behind behind uh, Georgetown. So if you recall, we have two cars that we need to drop in the siding. Um, these are the cards for them. They're basically the uh, the two uh, all-door boxcars. So first thing we need to do is drop the caboose off and uh, to kind of sort our train around so that we can leave those cars in the siding. So we're going to take our caboose here and leave it on the main line. Cut that guy off right here. If I can get to in here. There. Okay. Pull back forward. Let me clear the switch. Good. Brakeman throws the switch. So we're going to push all of the train back, except uh, including everything we need, the whole train, and then uh, we'll take the locomotive and do some work there. So There's one car, two cars that we're going to drop. Push the whole thing in. Good enough. Set that off there. Now I'll stick the caboose on the end. Oh, wrong way. Sorry. My mistake.
a lot easier than coupling the first time. There you go. Okay, so now we've backed onto the caboose. We're going to tack it on the end of the train. Break and go get get down, throw the switch, put the lock in it, and then we'll back up the caboose onto the end of the train. Let go of the caboose. Now we got to run around to the other end and do some work on that end. Now here we are at the other end. The locomotive is coming to couple onto the front of the train. So now what we have to do is pull the whole train out, put the last three cars, the caboose and the last two cars onto the main line, push the cars we want to leave back into the siding, drop them, pull the front three cars out, rejoin the train together, and we're off, off and running. So now we pull the whole train out. Other way. You can see we left the last, last three cars on the main line. Now we're pushing the two cars that we're going to drop back into the siding and leave them there. Um, a couple please. There we go. So the uh, brakeman will have to tie those down put the handbrakes on them and uh, when that's ready then he'll pull forward and then we'll rejoin the train together on the main line and be ready to proceed to Winnipeg. The whole train is back together. We've done our full brake test. Paperwork's all done. We're ready to pull to Winnipeg. Too bad for the crew, they have to go long hood forward, but there's no place in uh, Georgetown to turn the locomotive. Alright, so now we're looking at the CP staging in Winnipeg. The train is on track three. There's the four cars we brought in. Sorry, five. I can't count. Five cars that we brought in. Uh, the locomotive has been moved off and is on the head of CP975, ready to head back to Minidosa later in the day. We've also tacked the caboose from the train on the end of the uh, end of the 975, ready to go back. And you might ask, how do we run around the train when all four tracks in the yard are full? Well, there's a couple of different ways, but. Uh, what I basically assumed is that 1341 would have come off and helped to hold the uh, hold the train of uh, of uh, 976 down here outside the yard while it did the run around and then shoved it back in. That was my assumption. I I didn't actually do that. I used my I used my hand. I cheated, but uh, that's what would have had to happen because uh, otherwise it would be very hard to run around when all the tracks are full. So. That's the end of CP976 and time to move on to the next train. 
So our next train is CP949. That's a Winnipeg to Brandon train. So this uh, train goes through Georgetown, departs Winnipeg at 0900. It has a maximum of six cars. Uh, it drops Georgetown cars in the siding. That's cars destined for Georgetown. and picks up westbound cars from the siding only. It doesn't do a whole lot of work. Uh, it does a drop off and a pick off, pick up if necessary. So let's have a look at our train. It's uh, S1341, which is this locomotive right here, with a caboose on the end. It has 3 bay hopper ALPX628099 going to Georgetown, the UGG grain elevator. The next one is the Winnipeg uh, hopper, also going to Georgetown. And it has a bulkhead flat car that is going to Calgary and a gondola that is going to Calgary. So only four cars and two of them are being dropped off. Pretty straightforward. We're going to do a drop and if you remember previously we had a uh, we, we left some cars in the siding so we're going to pick up the westbound cars and carry on. So rip off the velcro for our, our uh, controller. We're ready to go. We're looking at Georgetown here. You can see we have these two cars in the siding here that we left from a previous train. Those are heading, uh, these, these are the cars for them. They're both empty cars returning to Vancouver, which is west. So we have to pick them up and we have those two green cars to drop off. So what we will do is we will just drive, drive right by uh, those cars, drop the car, the rear end of the train that is continuing on west and then uh, do a little switching in the siding. So we'll just drop the last two cars and the caboose on the main line and then switch the other end. Now we're going to come into the siding, pick up these cars, and pull them out and put them on the main line. So at this point, the, the uh, brakeman will have to uh, release the handbrakes and uh, then get back on the train for the forward movement. You can see that the uh, rent the train that's continuing west is on the main line and this is the siding where we're going to pick these up. So we're going to pull these two, these two cars here in the back out and put them on the train and then we'll come back and we'll put these two green cars uh, into the siding. Okay, so those two are there. Throw the switch for the siding. And then we'll push those two green cars back into the siding and leave them there.
Green cars are in the siding, tied down with handbrakes. So it's back out on the main line. We will uh, then back onto our train and get ready to continue on. We've done our brake tests, ready to go. The next train up is CN404. Uh, Melville to Winnipeg via Georgetown. So this one uh, departs Melville at 15.30. Can have up to nine cars. Uh, it works Irving Oil and Manitoba Pool as required in Georgetown. So, a couple of things going on here. So it works Irving Oil and Manitoba Pool. So we have two cars that are in the siding in uh, Georgetown right now. Both of them are supposed to go to Winnipeg. Since this train is going to Winnipeg as well, we'll pick them up from the siding. So those two are to be picked up. One of them is to go into Candu, Winnipeg, which is over here in the corner. You can't really see it, but that, that white building, uh, there's my finger, there, right there. That's Candu, that's for car repair. So we'll be doing that. Now, what's on our train right now, you might ask? Let's have a look. So we have CN404, we have the RS18-3125 with the caboose. We have an auto rack, which is just carrying on east to Moncton. We have a hopper going, BNSF hopper going to Halifax. We have a gondola going to Halifax. We have a three bay hopper going to Toronto. We have a boxcar going to Toronto. Thunder Bay. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. So we have actually no work on our train for Georgetown. So all we're going to do is go there and work uh, Georgetown. So in Georgetown, there is. Uh, Nothing in the uh, Manitoba pool siding, but there is a tank car in the Irving Oil siding. I haven't looked at the waybill for that yet, so I will do that when we get to Georgetown and see if we need to lift it. So, time to go. Give it a little shove. Off we go. Okay, we're approaching Georgetown now. Now you may remember we have a pickup in the siding of uh, two cars, but I also looked at the waybill here and that tank car that's in the siding right here uh, needs to go east to Montreal. So we're gonna pick that one up as well. Okay, we've gone into the siding. We've coupled onto the tank car, released the handbrakes, verified it's ready to move and off we go. Throw the switch for the main line and push it back onto our, sorry, that's the wrong switch. Throw the switch for the main line and push it back onto our train. And then we'll go get the two cars in the siding.
Okay. And this time we throw the switch for the siding and go back and get those two cars that are way back there. This is not the best locomotive. All right, so we've got the cars. We have to uh, release the handbrakes and uh, then we'll pull them forward and attach them to our train. We're gonna end up with quite a long train here since we're making no drops at all, but that's okay. Our staging yard is pretty long, pretty long in CN. The CP yard is much shorter, so we have to be careful about train legs a lot more in, in CP land. I'm running this uh, locomotive a lot faster than I normally would because it's uh, not being very reliable. So I kind of have to gun it to make sure that it uh, doesn't stall. All right. So at this point, we are all coupled up and ready to depart. Uh, the only problem, of course, is that the conductor will have to, sorry, the brakeman will have to go and make sure all the air hoses are connected. We'll have to uh, pump up the air and do a brake test. Um, these three cars at the head end were all um, added, so we have to do a complete brake test. And someone could correct me if I'm wrong, because the rear of the train was not disturbed, so it, its integrity hasn't been changed, but uh, the front three cars have been added, so we have to at least make sure that the brakes work, the air works between the locomotive and the auto rack back here because these three are, are new, we have to make sure that they all work. So that would take a few minutes. So while we do that, we'll take our paperwork here for the, uh, the tank car we've added. So we've got the gondola is first, then the, then the box car, and then the tank car. Those three are in behind the locomotive. So we'll, uh, Take the locomotive here and put them in front of the auto rack. Make one fat bundle here for the train. Pack together again. And let's assume that our brake test is done by now. And off we go. 